In this video, I'm looking at part seven, the qualitative analysis of organic functional groups. So the skills covered in the park include the use of apparatus for qualitative tests for organic functional groups, heating using a water bath or an electric heater, and the ability to make and record observations. So what I've done for this one is I've looked at some exam questions the practical style exam questions and I've looked at the PAGs themselves and I've come up with this question. Now this is not the definitive um, question on testing for organic functional groups because there's so many different combinations you could have but hopefully it will give you an idea of the kind of things that you would need to say if you were faced with something like this. So we'll quickly read through it and then if you want to pause the video and have a go and then play on and listen to the answer. So imagine a student was presented with seven test tubes labelled A to G. Each one contains a small amount of one of each of the following organic liquids. So you can see there your list of options. So what you've got to do is outline a series of test tube experiments that the student could perform to identify which test tube was which. And in your plan, you must include details of the tests carried out, chemicals required, and the expected observation for a positive result. You don't need to include quantities of chemicals, just the chemicals themselves. And finally, you need to write chemical equations for each positive response. Okay, so across the top of each slide, I'm listing the um, substances that remain. So this is the first test, and so we've got all of them so far. Now I've chosen a test for the alkene first, so if that's what you were doing first, you would need to do this. So to a small quantity of each chemical, add a few drops of bromine water, stop or shake, and the test tube in which the bromine water is decolorized must be the one that contains the cyclohexene. And so the chemical equation, you could write it like that, or you could write it like that. So the next one I've done is the test for the carboxylic acid. So again, to a small quantity of each chemical, I'm adding a small spatula measure of sodium carbonate now, and that's going to react with the carboxylic acid. It's the only one that does. And so the test tube in which there is effervescence or bubbling or fizzing, that must be the ethanoic acid. And the equation for that reaction looks like that. So I'm testing for the aldehyde next. So the first thing you need to do is actually make the Tollens reagent. So I'll go through that first. So to make Tollens, you add silver nitrate solution to a test tube. You see I've said 3 cm cubed there, but remember that the quantities aren't important. We're adding a drop of sodium hydroxide solution to the silver nitrate and that's going to give us a brown precipitate which we need to dissolve using dilute aqueous ammonia. So you add that a drop at a time until the brown precipitate dissolves to form a colourless solution and that is Tollens reagent. Now because there are five unknowns still to test we need to divide that into five portions and we would add a few drops of each chemical to each of the test tubes, so one per test tube, different one in each one. We'd place those five test tubes in a water bath at 50 degrees C, I'm saying. You just need to get across the idea that it needs to be in hot water. And the test tube in which a silver mirror forms must contain the propanol. So the chemical equations taking place, there are two here. We've got the propanol, which is oxidised by the Tollens reagent to propanoic acid, and the silver ions in the Tollens reagent are reduced to silver atoms, and that's the silver mirror. So the next test I'm doing is the test for the haloalkanes. So we've got two haloalkanes here, one bromobutane, one iodobutane. So what I would do is to a small quantity of each of the remaining chemicals, I'm adding one cubic centimetre of silver nitrate solution and one cubic centimetre of ethanol. And just if you're interested, the role of the ethanol there is to 
help the chemicals to mix together, otherwise they would just form two separate layers. We then place the test tubes in a water bath at 50 degrees C and the test tubes, plural, in which a precipitate forms contains haloalkanes. So we're going to get two precipitates here, a cream one and a yellow one. Now because those colours are fairly similar, it's a good idea to do this final test. So to the two precipitates, you would add concentrated ammonia solution and in one of the tubes the precipitate dissolves so that must be the one bromobutane because silver bromide that's the precipitate that actually dissolves in concentrated ammonia whereas the silver iodide precipitate doesn't dissolve so the precipitate that remains must have been the iodobutane so equations wise there's the reaction between the water and the 1-bromobutane and there's the reaction for the iodobutane and you can see there both equations generate a halide ion which will actually react with the silver ions from the silver nitrate solution so there's the formation of the silver bromide precipitate and there's the formation of the silver iodide precipitate so we're down to two now, just two alcohols. We've got a primary one, propan one ol, and we've got a tertiary one with two methyl propan two ol. So I'm saying to a small quantity of the remaining chemicals, add one cm cubed of dilute sulfuric acid and a few drops of potassium dichromate six solution. So in other words, acidified potassium dichromate. But they do like to see that you're using the right acid so I would suggest you always specify that it's dilute sulfuric acid. Place the test tubes in a water bath again at 50 degrees C and the test tube in which you get a colour change of orange to green uh, must be the primary alcohol so that must be the problem one all. The test tube which remains orange is the tertiary alcohol the 2 methyl problem 2 all. So what's happened to the proton one ol It's been oxidised. I'm saying to the aldehyde, because to get the carboxylic acid, you would need to reflux. Obviously, just putting a test tube in a water bath at 50 is not the same as refluxing. So it's very unlikely that you would produce the carboxylic acid there. Now, there is an alternative order you could carry these out in. Things like um, the carboxylic acid before the alkene doesn't really make any difference. The, the main one that's going to make a difference is if you do the acidified dichromate test before you eliminate the aldehyde. So I've just made this slide to talk about that. So if you did it in that order, then you would actually get two test tubes would give you the orange-green colour change, and they would be the proton one all and the propanal because both of them can be oxidized so what you would need to do is then to those two chemicals you would carry out the Tollens test on them and that would help you identify the aldehyde from the primary alcohol obviously the aldehyde would give you the silver mirror and the primary alcohol wouldn't the tertiary alcohol would remain unidentified and would just continue to give negative results until the end of the experiments.